Hello and welcome to another episode of our video series about the Amsterdam Modeling Suite. My name is Tomáš Trnka and today I'm going to give you a few tips about optimizing ReactsFF force field using our tools. This video is based on our ReactsFF tutorials that you can find on our website. So if you haven't seen them yet, click the link in the video description and take a look. Any ReactsFF optimization workflow starts with a training set. This is a collection of chemical systems together with their properties of interest. These may be energy differences between single point calculations describing bond dissociation profiles or reaction profiles, or geometry parameters obtained by geometry optimizations. Together, these form the error function which is the input to a parameter optimizer that tries to minimize this error function by changing the ReactsFF parameters. The optimized force field can then be validated by evaluating the error function on a separate validation set to test the predictive power of the force field. If the predictive power is found to be insufficient, we need to iteratively tune the training set, changing the weights and its composition to get a balanced description of all the properties. Let's now take a short look at the principle of operation of the CMAES parameter optimizer. This will make it easier to understand the data that we'll see later on. Just like other evolutionary algorithms, CMAES is a stochastic optimizer that tries to find an optimal population of parameterizations that generate the minimum error. But unlike common algorithms like genetic algorithms, CMAES does not describe the population as a collection of individual points. Instead, it uses a multivariate Gaussian function defined by a mean and covariance matrix. In this simple sketch here, the position of this Gaussian distribution is denoted by the gray cross and the shape of the distribution is depicted by the gray circle. The two axes of the plot denote the two parameters to be optimized and the colored surface is our error function, with the blue region being the region with the lowest error. In the first step of the algorithm, we generate a set of trial parameterization from the Gaussian distribution. Afterwards, we evaluate the error function for each of these points and sort them in order of increasing value of the error. Then we discard the worst half of the points and assign linearly decreasing weights to the remaining ones. This means that the point with the lowest error gets the highest weight. Afterwards, we use this weighted combination of points to update the position and shape of the Gaussian distribution. Finally, we forget about these points as well and use this distribution to start the next cycle. CMAES has a few key features that make it especially well suited for the task of optimizing ReactsFF force fields. First of all, it's fully self-learning, so it automatically adjusts itself to the shape of the underlying error function. There are no hyperparameters that would need to be tuned to obtain a reasonable result. It is also insensitive to noise, and because we discard the worst half of points, it is also insensitive to evaluation failures such as geometric convergence issues or force fields that generate infinite energies. All the points in the population are evaluated in parallel and the number of these points is freely adjustable. Using more points accelerates the learning process of CMAES and makes it converge in fewer iterations. This is especially useful when optimizing many parameters at the same time. Using a larger population also makes it possible to efficiently use more CPU cores, thus shortening the overall time needed for the optimization. Let's now move on to a practical demo. For that, we'll use the package included with the online reparameterization tutorial. We'll use the ADF train tool to turn the included training set into a minimal example. This is to showcase some issues that you may run into in your parameter optimization workflows. We'll start by opening the pre-made training set. If we enable the errors only checkbox, we can see that some systems are highlighted in red. As the tooltip says, this is because these systems are never used to calculate any properties in the training set. We can thus use 
the SysMart system status command in the training set menu to automatically disable them. For the purposes of this example, we will also disable all angle terms in the training set. We'll do this by setting the filter to angles and then using select all and disable. In the bottom panel, we will also disable the optimization of all parameters except for three sets of bond dissociation energies. We can select a block of parameters by clicking while holding the shift key and then disable a block by right clicking. You may notice that two of the highlighted values have suspicious zero values. The tooltip tells us that these are the pi bond dissociation energies for hydrogen nitrogen bonds, and obviously, hydrogen atoms can't form pi bonds. For that reason, we will also disable these two parameters. There are other similar cases in ReactFF force fields where parameters should never be optimized. For example, among the bonded parameters, these are parameters 6 and 15. As you can see, these are just logical flags that enable or disable particular correction terms in the ReXFF potential. There's no point optimizing them using the CMAES optimizer, so we'll never enable those. Hovering over one of the energies, we can see that ADF train provides us with some useful data that can help us set the initial values or the allowed ranges of values for a particular parameter. We can see the minimum and maximum and average values collected from the entire force field library that's shipped together with the Amsterdam modeling suite. In the bottom part of the tooltip, we can see a histogram of values across all the available force fields. So now that we've set up our training set and force field, we can close ADF train. First, we need to save the results into the training data directory. We are now ready to start the optimizer. While it's running, we can monitor its progress using the ADF tail tool by watching the CMAS progress file. We can see that the standard deviations of the parameters started off similar, but are slowly evolving. The ratio of the minimum and maximum standard deviation, thus the ratio of the sensitivities of, of the least and most sensitive parameters, is printed here under axis ratio. The sigma value is an overall scaling factor for the width of the entire distribution. Let's now fast forward to the end of this optimization. By comparing the number of function evaluations between two subsequent CMA iterations, we can see that our CMA population consists of 9 points by default. The optimizer has terminated. Although the output says normal termination with errors, this is usually not a cause for concern. These errors usually mean that some of the trial force fields have failed to produce a reliable error value. But as we said previously, CMA is pretty resilient in this regard and a few convergence failures or evaluation failures are, don't affect the progress of the optimization at all. To find the true reason why the optimizer has stopped, we need to look into the output. The termination reason is printed close to the end of the output file, right before the total CPU time, so we can just search for total CPU. The optimizer has stopped because the standard deviations have considerably increased. This means that the initial guess of the covariance matrix was too local, and we can get better performance by starting with a more global search. For this, we need to increase the so-called delta values for all the optimized parameters. To change the delta values, we can either use ADF train or just edit the params file using your favorite text editor. 
So let's open the params file and change the delta values to 100. Just for illustration, let's increase the size of the CMA population. For that, we need to edit the cma-es.run file in the input directory. We will scroll down to the end of the control section and add the replic parameter with a well value of, let's say, 12 points in a population. Please note that this file is sensitive to alignment, so the replic keyword has to be aligned exactly in these columns. And now we can run the optimizer again. This time, the optimizer has terminated because it exceeded the limit on the condition number of the covariance metrics. To understand what this means, we need to take a closer look at the progress report. In the progress report, we can see the values of the optimized parameters for several different points. First of them is the point with the lowest error encountered during the entire CMAES run. The second set corresponds to the best point of the last generation. And the third set is the mean of the Gaussian distribution. You can notice that these values are very different from the values we've seen in the force field. This is because the optimizer internally applies a nonlinear transformation to all the parameters. This transformation maps the minimum allowed value of every parameter to minus infinity and the maximum allowed value to plus infinity. We can see that several of the parameters have pretty large values. This corresponds to values that are very close to the boundary of the allowed range. For this reason, the standard deviation of these parameters are also very high. Because other parameters have small standard deviations at the same time, the resulting distribution is very elongated and CMA can't progress any further due to limited numerical precision. A situation like this can have several different reasons. Either the allowed parameter ranges are too restrictive, the affected parameters aren't sufficiently captured by the training set, or the optimizer is trying to compensate for its inability to tune other parameters. So the solutions may be to change the allowed ranges, extend the training set, or enable the optimization of several other parameters. Typically, hitting the allowed boundaries is a sign of severe overfitting, so the first step should be to improve the training set. You can also take a look at the evolution of the error over the course of the CMAES optimization run. For this, switch into the run directory and run the optconvergence script. This script creates a file that can be visualized, for example, using ADF graphs. We can see that the optimizer has quickly eliminated most of the error, but then made only small improvements over the rest of the optimization run might be useful to truncate the optimization to, for example, 1000 iterations and compare the results. Finally, let's take a look at the composition of the error function for our force field. To do this, we'll first calculate the errors for the initial guess and then for the optimized force field and compare the results. First, we can compare the errors in predicted energies. We can see that the errors for most systems have decreased going for the from the initial force field to the optimized one. We can also take a look at the errors in bond distances, which we have been optimizing.
we can see that in many cases the errors have increased going from the original to the optimized force field. This is understandable because we've not fitted any of the distance parameters but only the energy parameters in the force field. So the obvious next step would be to enable fitting of the bond distance parameters. You can click on a particular term to see which bond it corresponds to. Finally, let me summarize the key recommendations from this video. First of all, because we are using a stochastic optimizer, remember to always compare the results from multiple copies of the same optimization run before drawing any conclusions. Also, remember to always validate the resulting force field. If necessary, adjust the composition of the training set or the weights to prevent overfitting to a single property at the expense of others. When you have many CPU cores at your disposal or you are fitting many parameters at the same time, try increasing the population size to make the optimization more efficient. Try to avoid including too many geometry optimizations in your training set. This ensures that the optimization process will be stable and reliable. Don't blindly fit many parameters in the force field at the same time without testing first whether all of them are necessary to describe the systems of interest. Make sure you don't enable the optimization of parameters that aren't adequately described by the training set. This prevents overfitting and makes your force field more transferable. This brings us to the end of today's video. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have, so please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you for watching and goodbye.